Hello and welcome to our third base element. Yeah, this time we are talking about a differential element. Yeah, this time we are talking about a d element. Yeah, so we are talking about a differential differential element or short d element. One thing right away, a D element is somewhat an artificial element. Yeah? It is not really existing in reality. This means it's very hard for me to find an example. However, I have one for you. It's an electrical example. I think it's getting very close to a real D element. And you should know this thing I'm drawing now. Condensator. Okay. At the condensator, we have a certain voltage. We have a certain, a certain, charge. Yeah. And of course, we do have a certain current running through. And we know the formula for our for our uh, charge. Uh, the charge inside the the condensator is the capacity of the condensator multiplied by the voltage of the condensator. Okay, and if we sum up all the current which was running in, so if we sum up from 0 to t everything which was entering the condensator up to now, yeah, we have our load of the con condensator because it, the, traveling, the charges are traveling in and accumulating here. Yeah. So this means if I'm using this, this is c multiplied by uc from t. Yeah. And now to get rid of this of this uh, integration here, I will differentiate this. So the current which is running through the condensator is the capacity multiplied by the change rate of the of the voltage. Okay. Now let's assume again this is some sort of, of transfer function. Okay. So this time this is a D element. Okay. We again do have the input here and again we do have the output so we do have here the output xo from t, we do have here the input xi from t, yeah. and of course after Laplace transformation we have xi from s and xo from s, that's still the same, yeah. and of course we again do have a transfer function here, g from s, which is describing this transition. Okay. In our case here, in our case, the output, yeah, the output is the current. Yeah. So this here is x o, yeah. and the input is the voltage. Yeah. This is x i. So basically, what is written here is x o from t multiplied uh, equals some factor, constant factor, kt, yeah, multiplied by the change rate of the input. Okay, that's 
the formula in time area. If I do this transition to the plus area, xo from s equals kt will be kept, differentiation, I assume the input was zero and all derivations were zero and so on, so I can simply just multiply with s yeah, and xi from s. So I already see the transfer function, yeah, xi multiplied by gs is xo, so this gs must be kt multiplied by s. So g from j omega is j omega kd. That's it. Not too complicated. What does it mean? Yeah. Let's have a look again on our axis. Yeah. Imaginary axis. Read axis. We do have here j, so this means we have only imaginary part. Yeah. This is it. And the length, the length here is just omega kd and here we do have plus 90 degree. Yeah. The bigger omega will be, the longer this will go up. Yeah. The, if omega is zero, it will be at zero. Yeah. But regardless, it will always stay at 90 degree yeah. because it's j omega kd. J is always pointing up. Okay. What does it mean? The absolute value equals omega kd. Okay. So for omega is zero, yeah, the absolute value is also zero. Yeah. And for omega is unlimited, the absolute value is also unlimited. Yeah. And now the argument, this, we just thought about this, this is always 90 degree. Yeah. So the argument from free j0 is 90 degree. And the argument from g, j unlimited, is still 90 degree. Okay. This is the description of this d element differentiator. Like I said, in reality, this is not really is not really happening. This is the thing which comes, in my opinion, comes closest to it. Okay, what does it mean? What does it mean for the Bode plot and the step response? So let's write it down here. D element GS equals KT multiplied by S. So this G from J omega equals kd multiplied j omega yeah. absolute value equals kd multiplied by omega yeah. uh, argument is always 90 degree So let's have a look at the step response. Yeah. Here, nothing changing, nothing else. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. And here I said, here would be frequency unlimited. Frequency unlimited, I said, it is unlimited. Yeah. So whatever comes in yeah, will have a very high, theoretically unlimited peak to. To eternity. Yeah? And then 
back here, nothing much changes, so it will be at zero again. Yeah? Since we only see the change rate in this output. We see already, we know in reality this will not go to unlimited. Yeah? This will be limited somewhere. Yeah? This means in reality we do not have a real T element. Yeah? What does it mean for our example? If I put in here a voltage at the condensator, the current here will peak yeah, at a very high peak and suddenly this will charge this capacitor. Yeah? And then if it then it's charged, then the, the current is zero again. Yeah? In reality, the current will never get unlimited because there are resistance and so on. Yeah, so but it's coming close to it. Yeah? It will we get very high peaks here, very very short time. The element step response. I cannot read anything out of it. Frequency response, this here is simple, always 90 degree, no dependency, no dependency on the omega, on the frequency, 90 degree plus, okay. For here, we also have to calculate or think a little bit when this will be 1, what, at what omega this will be 1. Yeah? The pinching frequency, if this omega is exactly 1 divided by kd, yeah, this will get 1, because 1 divided by kd multiplied with kd is 1. Yeah? So let's assume, I don't know, kd was 0 0.1, yeah? we are here. Here is the pinching frequency, omega d, we pinch through the one line. Yeah? This is the condition for pinching through the one line. Yeah? What if we have 10 times the frequency, then we have 10 times the output. What we have 100 times the frequency, then we have 100 times the output, and so on. And again, if we only have a tenth of the frequency, we have a tenth of the output. Again. We get a straight line yeah, in our double logarithmic diagram. We get a straight line. And again, yeah, we could calculate how much more frequency I would need to reach, I don't know, an output of 5. Yeah? If we have 10 here, yeah, and I want 10 means 1. How much frequency do I have? Do I need to have if I want to reach five? It's five times more, so I need five times more frequency. Yeah? So it's not ten; it's fifty. Okay. This is the typical behavior of a d-element, differential element, differentiator, however you want to call it. Okay. The next thing we are going to talk about is a delay element. Yeah. So this is an element which will damp a little bit the things which will happen. Yeah. These things we have talked about, so the proportional element, yeah, the integrational element, yeah, and the differential element, they are all, let's say, pure somehow. Yeah. But real, in reality we always have some sort of, of, of energy storage inside a system. Yeah? And if we have energy in store, inside, inside a system, we do not have these pure elements, we do have elements which will be a little bit delay. Yeah? So this is why it's called a delay system. And next time we're going to talk about delay system first order or PT1 element. For this video, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.